Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, riding solo once more, Josh Lander, tackling this May 16th Tuesday night slate, which is one game, the Eastern Conference, or sorry, the Western Conference playoffs kick off on Tuesday night. I also have a video up for you guys uh, that's coming about the Wednesday night game there in the Eastern Conference with the Celtics and the Heat. So make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Check that out. Continue to follow along. I'm going to have another, uh, this video is going to have best bets and player props in it for you guys. A couple of those for each of this Western Conference game. I also have a video up for you uh, about the series prices, a couple of the futures bets as we look at the championship market as well at this point in time. So definitely make sure to check that out. Also head to thelines.com. You can check out every Thing we're talking about here and more in written form there uh, and also use that odds finder tool i always tell you guys about a nice chart that you can use on the site to make sure that you see all the odds available to you from these various sports books and then you can select the juiciest ones for yourself uh, moving forward throughout this postseason I- i'm gonna jump right into my first pick here for this uh denver and Mil- um, denver and uh lakers game here i s- almost said milwaukee because i'm looking at a, a stat here i want to talk about which and, and the bet that i want to talk about which is denver to win this game on the money line and I also like the over, uh, and I like the over a, a good amount there, um, and, and I feel confident in Denver winning game one and kind of taking care of business, even though I think it'll be pretty close, uh, and it's only at five and a half points on the spread there. Um, so, you know, if, if you do think Den- feel comfortable about Denver, six points, not too much, but I think it's enough for me to feel like uh, L.A. can keep this thing close for a couple of reasons, but I still like Denver to win it on the money line, and that does get me to plus 184 on DraftKings if I combine those things together in a parlay. Get half a unit on that is kind of is where I'm going with it. Uh, Denver has a rest advantage uh, it's small uh, but it's, it's there basically and in at 15 and 6 against the spread 17 and 4 straight up in those situations and LA not too you know they're going to have three days of, of rest but the the 9 and 14 straight up with the rest of disadvantage this season something to take a look at and and really it's Denver at home and I do feel like they're con- I can feel good about them winning two games at home to start this series I talked about that in the uh, futures video that we have up because I wanted to just get across that if if you do think Denver's going to win at least one of these games, which I do, and, and probably two of the first two here, then this series price at minus 155 for Denver right now is not going to get much better. If anything, it's going to get worse. So that's kind of why I took that based on how good they are at home. That's really what a lot of this is predicated on. Uh, 36 and seven straight up at home this season. They uh, are 31 and four with Joker at home this season. They win these games by about three points on average. Uh, so far, those those 30, uh, 36 games at home, they're winning them by about an average of three points, pretty much exactly. Um, and, and so, you know, that's obviously Obviously, less than the six points they're getting from the Lakers. Just a, another number sort of in that favor. But uh, they're scoring 121 and a half at home, allowing 110 and a half. That was during the regular season. Um, and, and also, I'm sorry, during the playoffs, pretty much the uh, same numbers in the playoffs, actually giving up a few less points uh, per game. But a 98.4 pace is how they usually play at home. I think it's going to be around that 98, 99. If it's going really fast uh, and, and the Lakers decide they want to push things for some reason um, a little bit more than even in both teams like to get fast break points. But if, if this do- game does does get up a little bit further in pace, which I think we might see as, as when these two teams played, uh, there was 102 pace that they played in four meetings. And in the two they played in Denver, that was up to about 104 pace. Uh, so that is very, very fast. That's good for fastest pace in the league if they play that every game. Um, and they are playing faster uh, on the road this season uh, in the postseason a little bit is Denver, but they played at the same pace in about 98 at, at home and on the road during the regular season. I think you can expect a bit more of that as well. Um, they're the best, li- the, the best rebounding team team in this playoffs, limiting the opponent to the fewest rebounds, having the rep, the best rebound percentage as well. So I think there's plenty of reasons to feel like they'll come out and, and be firing on all cylinders. That last game against Phoenix just showed how well they can click. Uh, and, and they, they're not going to have the same level of advantage in terms of being able to key in on just two guys for LA. I know clearly AD and LeBron are their best two players, uh, but they have a pretty solid supporting cast at this point. D'Lo uh, and Austin Reeves are both playing super well. Uh, Dennis Schroeder, when he's not getting kicked out of the game, playing super well. So th- there's going to be a few more options for them to, I think, keep this game pretty close. And, and the free throw advantage is really one that you look at here for um, for LA and, and kind of wonder if they can get to the free throw line uh, a bunch, which I think they will, because I talked about this a little bit when I talked about taking Denver in the series price. Like if they can't stop the Lakers from getting to the free throw line, they're in big trouble. It's going to be a huge, uh, really X factor, if you will, of LA with, you know, one of the top three free throw attempt rates. They limit their opponent to one of the lowest free throw attempt rates. Uh, all that stuff was even more uh, glaring when they played the, the Warriors who were one of the worst at both of those categories uh, on themselves. So Denver, not great 
at limiting free throws so far. You know, one one stat to look at is when Minnesota was in there uh, in, in that series with Denver, they were they had the number two free throw attempt rate uh, of all the teams, 16 teams that were in the playoffs in the first round. And, and I think that's pretty indicative of wanting to foul Gobert at times to get him at the line. But at the same time, like Ant was getting to the rim and a lot of guys who, who can't attack the rim, which the uh, the Nuggets have in spades, or excuse me, the, uh, the, the Lakers have, I don't want to say in spades, but they have two of the best in terms of LeBron uh, and AD. Both of those guys going to the rim, very, very effective and not afraid uh, of Joker, obviously. So if they're going to get to the rim and they're going to be drawing a lot of fouls like they might, and Denver has a propensity to foul, then this this thing could be, you know, this is a game, a series that LA can definitely win. Uh, And in game one, that will be a huge sort of indicator, I think, of how this is going to go. But it is in Denver uh, and and LA averages more points at home in these playoffs by a pretty noticeable amount. Uh, There was a lot of talk about that when they played Golden State and not getting uh, the same amount of foul calls. They got the same amount of foul calls, rather, uh, and went to the line the same amount as the Warriors in game four. Four, which the Warriors won, um, or ble- ble- sorry, Game Five that they won before losing Game Six. So you know that that was another indication of what we've seen in the playoffs in general. Teams at home getting a lot more free throws. So I do think LA can keep one of these two, two games really close, if not pull one of them out. Um, but I, I'm still taking Denver to open things up with a 1-0 lead and, and go over uh, on this total. So pick number two here. I'm going with a player prop, uh, getting that in here a little bit early. Michael Porter Jr. Another bad series uh, matchup for him. It was not a good series matchup for him in Phoenix, and and that was clear before he even started playing in that series. He had a few good games, uh, getting over 15 points in those. But I'm going under for the 22.5 points, rebounds, and assists. That's minus 120 on DK. Can feel good about a a full unit on him to go under to start things off. Um, he, He has... Bad numbers against uh, the Lakers historically, just as much as he did he did uh, against the Suns. Twelve point three points per game for Michael Porter Jr. Five boards and point three assists in twenty seven minutes. I actually took away one of his. Uh, that's just in his last six. He's played them roughly seven or eight times in his career, but he didn't get very many minutes in both of those games. So I just really narrowed it down to when he was getting the you know, twenty seven minutes per game. Like I said, in those last six, uh, averaging what do we got here? Uh, 16, 17 ish, almost eighteen points, rebounds, and assists combined for him uh, in these playoffs. He's averaging about twenty one, and that's you know with a, a lot of games out of the uh, eleven that they've played. Uh, plenty of those games were uh, him not either getting a ton of minutes, his usage rate is down, and there was a few skewed by having like a nineteen point game in there uh, against Minnesota. Like I said, Minnesota had uh, is not is a good matchup for him. He he likes to beat up on bad teams that are bad defensively. Um, and this is not a bad team. It hasn't been one uh, since he really started playing them for the last couple seasons. So the 21% usage rate that he has against the Lakers, not very high, but uh, or, excuse me, in, in the playoffs right now, 21% usage rate, pretty low for him and the amount of shots he's getting, 16% usage at home in these playoffs and, and you're seeing most guys have their usage rate go down but his is below Aaron Gordon uh, and Bruce Brown at this point when they're on the floor uh, and in the two games uh, that he's played LA this season they just don't really care about Michael Porter Jr. Now maybe you want to use that as a way to um, you know to say like okay well he's going to have a better matchup and be a little bit more open because there's been games where he's you know he's being guarded by either Russ Westbrook at times Dennis Schroeder D'Lo um, you know not he had Pat Bev on him here and there but like not very often uh is he get is he getting a solid uh you know defender on him and i'm just using that to say he, they don't respect him um and maybe th- i'll be proven wrong in game 1 and we we recalibrate here um but i don't think he's he's ripe for a ton of rebounds we know he's not going to get assists uh and and it, the points you know he's just not even getting the shots up at this point uh in these playoffs it's a ton of joker and a ton of murray as we've seen combining for nearly 60% uh usage between the two so i just feel like it's going to be a lot more of that uh and i think there's other guys who are, are better served um, to be able to, you know, make shots and get to get to better spots, basically guys like Bruce Brown and even KCP in this one. So uh, fading MPJ in game one, we'll see how that goes and, and get back to you on it uh, and see how we might play that moving forward. But third pick here, we've got LeBron James, and I'm just going to keep this simple real quick and just go over on his rebounds because I've been fading his points and assists. I'm a little bit afraid to do that. I don't have the confidence in him to get the points and assist combo or the points or assists separately each. Um, but I, I like him to continue to get rebounds. And that's why it's it's so low, actually, for him to get nine boards. Over eight and a half is minus 136 on FanDuel. Putting a unit on it. I'm also going to put like a half unit. Maybe you want to do a quarter on uh, 10 plus boards. Just one more rebound for him gets you up to plus 125 on DraftKings. So on DraftKings, it's not a good, it's pretty bad odds. It's minus 140 for him to get nine boards, but it's plus 125 for him to get 10 boards. Uh, don't 
chase a double double, you get bad odds for that. Once again, another little uh, tactic by the books to keep you thinking, oh, I'll get the double double. That'll give me some juice. But in reality, uh, we know he's going to get 10 points. It's really just the rebounds, whether or not he's going to get those. And if you go for the double double, you lose those odds, the juice and the odds there because you, he could get the assist double double. So they think, oh, OK, well, we're going to lower your odds because he could do it in a number of different categories. But in reality, he's probably not getting 10 assists anymore in these playoffs. He is like to get 10 boards at times, uh, as he's done a number of times in these playoffs. He's averaging 10 rebounds per game in the playoffs. Uh, he's recorded nine plus in 10 of the 12 games uh, that he's played in this postseason. Last 14 of his 20 playoff games, he's recorded at least nine boards. Uh, a couple other things. He's going to be guarding Aaron Gordon. That's the matchup in this series is, is those two guarding each other on both ends of the floor for the majority of the time they're on the floor. Um, and, and he's going to be cl closer to the basket as a result. That's where Aaron Gordon plays. He's the, the clear cut four in this lineup. Uh, Jeff Green, when he's out there with LeBron, probably will be a matchup as well. Another dude playing closer to the basket. Obviously, both of them a little bit versatile, as is LeBron, the, maybe the most versatile ever. Um, but, you know, the fact that he's going to be guarding a guy who actually does back down guys a lot more, Aaron Gordon, uh, and things like that. There's a great clip of Aaron Gordon trying to back down LeBron earlier this season, LeBron uh, swatting his shot and then going, you're not the only dude in the league who works out, dude, because he knows how strong Aaron Gordon is. And that's going to be a lot more what you can expect uh, from, from Gordon in this one, making LeBron closer to the basket uh, and, and obviously more opportunities for rebounds there. And, and last thing there, Jared Vanderbilt has made himself pretty much unplayable. Uh, I don't know why that would change in this series. They needed points and they needed someone who wasn't a complete liability when you were swinging the ball around the perimeter. And Jared Vanderbilt was just that uh, shooting. Uh, what's he 21% from the field, 18% from three in that series with the Warriors played 14 and a half minutes per game. And, and that after game two, where he had close to 30, um, he, he really rarely got on the floor after that, looking at about 10 minutes per game in those last three or four against the dubs. So uh, not going to be much of him out there to take those rebounds away. And that means the only two solid rebounders on the floor for those, for the Lakers uh, at that point, Reeves, is a pretty good rebounder, but not nearly, uh, you know, what LeBron and, and AD will have to provide there on the board. So last one, not my favorite pick. I just wanted to make sure I got four, uh, a nice even number instead of just give you three. I am looking at Kenny Caldwell Pope, and I wanted to figure out a way to bet him. I like the revenge narrative uh, of him playing against the Lakers, coming back to them, uh, play against them after being their third leading scorer when they won the championship in the bubble. So just a quarter unit on his points and rebounds, uh, 12 and a half, the rebounds themselves, Two and a half. That's probably a better bet, to be honest. Um, it's minus 130. Maybe we should forego a little bit of juice and just take the boards because for him to get three seems very, very likely he'll be out there for 33 minutes. Um, yeah, you know what, Jack? I'm going to change this real quick and just make it uh, over two and a half boards for him. I mean, the points and rebounds, like I said, a little bit better uh, in terms of the, the juice there. And, and there is the likelihood that he could hit a couple of threes and that gets you over the points and rebounds. But for him to just get three boards in those 33 minutes, he's done it in three of four versus LA as a member of the Nuggets uh, when he's played them four times. Um, he's going to be out there for 33 minutes again. He's going to be playing Austin Reeves for the most part, I believe, uh, as the matchup on defense. Um, and then he's averaging about 14 points and rebound, more than that, sorry, 14 and a half points and rebounds uh, per game in the playoffs. But he's gone under the 12 and a half points and rebounds a number of times. Uh, he had like a nice outburst there, I believe a 21 point game at one point in these playoffs as well. So that's kind of skewing the points and rebounds a bit. He does get over this as well. 15 of uh, averages 15. Uh, versus LA in, in four games this season went over in three of four versus the Lake show this season. So there's, there's reason to believe he can get the points and rebounds. I'm going to tweak this to just say, take the rebounds. Let's not chase all of, you know, the minus minus one fifteen as opposed to the minus minus one thirty for the three boards. I think that's just, just as likely more likely really uh, than, than the points and rebounds to the tune of a, 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 the, the little bit of juice you're losing there. I'm really not worried about at all uh, with, with the likelihood, the increased likelihood of him getting the boards over the points and the boards. So that's all the time I have for you in this one. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Check out the other video I have up for you. Game one uh, with the, the Heat and the Celtics. Coming back with Nate, I believe, on Thursday. If not, I'll have one more solo video for you guys to get ahead of that game, too. And until we see you next, happy betting.